Hey y'all, welcome back to the crazy. I'm Leslie, this is Fat Cat Flossing, a channel about cross stitch. Today is Saturday, February 1st, 2020. I'm getting set on that ear now. About half the time, I wrote out checks yesterday to pay bills and half of them had 2019 on them. Anyway, uh, welcome back y'all. I sure appreciate it. Um, whether you're here for the first time or you are an experienced crazy person, I love having um, my visit with y'all. It's my opportunity to share about my cross stitch and um, I love um, the interaction with all of you floss too. So thanks for coming back to watch me blither. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff to show today, I think. I don't have a whole lot of whips, but I got a lot of other stuff to show. Um, and I'll just give you a quick update on what's going on with us. The kittens are all doing great. The ones that were born on Christmas were five weeks old on Wednesday. And they are so cute, y'all. I will try to put up some more video maybe next, maybe this weekend, maybe next week. We'll see what I can get done. But they're doing great. They're all eating solid food and scampering around like crazy. We're still trying to overcome the potty challenge. I had them in the playpen, but... Beauty is a little crazy when she's got kittens. And, you know, the kittens were corralled in the playpen and the mamas can jump over the top. Well, she kept jumping in and dragging them out. And I was afraid she was gonna hurt a kitten, taking them in and out of the playpen. So I just took them out and they're wandering about the kitten room, which is fine. It's just they don't learn to potty as well when they're not confined in a small space with their potty box. So cross your fingers, we get that hurdle covered here before too long. Um, I just got done with my chores and got out of the shower, so y'all excuse my crazy hair. It's wet and frizzy and oh well. Love me, love my crazy hair. Um, the other thing that's been going on around here um, is y'all know Steve, um, a little over a year ago, was diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And because of that, he has to have an ultrasound, cat on the bar, that sky, and I give up. I just don't have enough mental energy to fight it. But anyway, he has to have an, a liver ultrasound quarterly, and his last one when he had, he had the first week of January, showed some type of something um, roughly adjacent to his liver. So they referred him for a CAT scan, um, which was this past Monday, and it shows some type of retroperitoneal mass. And as of right now, that's all we know. So we're waiting on more tests. He goes this coming Tuesday, the 4th, I think, um, for a CT guided biopsy. Um, 30 to 40% uh, retino retroperitoneal masses mm -hmm. are benign. Um, so y'all, please keep my husband Steve in your prayers that this does intend, indeed turn out to be some type of just soft tissue benign mass and not something um, much more negative. Um, and I'm not going to talk a whole lot more about that because I'll cry. So, but I would really, really appreciate your prayers for him and for us because we're scared poopless right now. So, and the other part of that is he's going to have a whole bunch of testing. So, um, if you try to get in contact with me and I don't answer fairly quickly, I'm sorry. Y'all just cut me some slack and I'll get back with you when I can. And if I don't get back with you, I may have missed it. So feel free to email me or message me or Facebook me or whatever again. Um, anyway, okay, moving on from that. Um, I guess the first thing I'm gonna show is, I don't have the pattern handy because I have sent it on. This is um, Home for Christmas from Plum Street Samplers. It was a limited re club release last year. It's now available. Um, at your LNS, and this is the one that had fallen on the floor and the kitty had puked all over it. And I did follow the advice of several folks and used a color catcher and soaked this, and I just soaked it in Dawn dishwashing liquid um, and warm water and put the color catcher, no, cold water, and put the color catcher thing in there, and it did come. I can't see. There was a big spot up here and a big spot all down here. Maybe you can see a little bit of the outline of it down there, but I think it looks pretty good. And best of all, it no longer smells like kitty puke. So I will try, be trying to get this finished um, within the next few days as I have time. So thank you to everybody who offered advice on how to salvage that. I sure do appreciate it because I love that piece. 
Okay, what else? Um, I had a finish, I guess, two weekends ago. I don't know, it's all run together now. It's, it's been a crazy few days. Um, I was stitching from this book, and this book is Tending the Garden from Blackbird Designs. Um, I believe it is still available. I got my copy from Teresa, kittenstitcher.com. Um, I don't know if she still has it, but I do believe the book is still in print. And this is my grandmother's garden. Sorry about the glare, y'all. From Blackbird Designs. It's gloomy out, so I've got all the lights on. And I stitched this um, just because I loved all those flowers, you know, those, all those springy colors just are right up my alley. But as I was stitching it, I got to thinking, well, it's grandmother's garden. My grandmother always gardened and did a lot of other things. She was a remarkable lady. She lived to be 99 years old. Um, and so I put her name on there, Beulah Cox Clifton. And as I was doing, because I, I knew when she died, but I could not remember what year she was born. So as I was doing the research to find um, what year she was born, I got to thinking about my dad's mom. Ruth Cox Knopp. My dad is a little bit, or was a little bit of an unusual case. He was born in 1931. And as you can see, that's my paternal grandmother's death date. He was actually a posthumous baby. He was born, um, according to my grandmother's death certificate, was born alive five minutes after she was pronounced dead. She had a stroke um, when she was in labor with him and passed away. And they did an emergency C-section and delivered my dad. So he was kind of a miracle baby, especially for 1931. But I'm grateful to her for giving him life. My dad was a great, great guy. And this is my finish to honor both of my grandmothers, my grandmother's garden from Blackbird Designs. And unfortunately, I've been rating my frame stash because I've been doing some finishing and I don't have anything that will fit this. So I'm gonna have to go thrifting again and go looking for some frames because I would love to have this framed and hung up. I think it turned out beautifully. There are a few, hmm, I don't remember now. Maybe the only specialty stitches in this are the satin stitches. And as you can see, hopefully, the bodies of the butterflies are satin stitched. But I think it turned out really well and I love it. Can't wait to have that fully finished. And y'all, my stacks have stacks, so cut me some slack here. And then, oh, the beginning of this past week, I think, um, I had another finish. I think sometime this week I had a finish. This is Fractor Flowers from La Di Da. It's a beautiful pattern. Now, mine doesn't look quite like this. Mine looks a little bit different. I used Julie McConnell from Reflections Framing and Stitching. I used her conversion for this. This is um, one over two on 36 count. Picture this plus murky with Julie's conversion. And, and basically her conversion just brightens up the colors, makes them a little more dynamic. Um, and I think it turned out beautifully. My only regret about this one is I wish that I had done the fabric the other way because if this bird I think you I think this area would show up better if it were in a darker part of the fabric and of course I stitched over that's a lot of that's all solid stitching there stitch over a lot of dark fabric right there so but I'm still very happy with it I do have a frame all picked out and I'm ready to the mats cut and I mean the Matte board, whatever, whatever you pin it to, is all cut and ready to go. But um, I ran out of pins, so I have to go to Hobby Lobby sometime this weekend and pick up a, some stainless steel pins for that. And y'all stay tuned because this will be this week's giveaway here when we get done with stuff. And I want to show you a couple of other things that I forgot to get. So bear with me for one second.
Sorry, I meant to get all this before I sat down and just had my usual degree of brain fartedness. So, when I did my all of my finishes for 2019, um, I had the guilties. I had a bad case of the guilties because I had a bunch of stuff that I had either wasn't even attempted to finish or that I kind of half-assed finish and not completely finished it. So, um, I guess last week or week before last, right after I did that um, finish, 2019 finish parade, I got on my butt and got some stuff done. I'm just going to show these briefly because all I have done is stuff them and sew them up. Basket full of cherries from Blackbird Designs. The rarest flower from Blackbird Designs. Scatter hearts from Shepherd's Bush. And I had these all made into the little pillows. I just had not sewn up the bottom of the pillow because I was I was out of batting with my excuse. That I, or not batting, stuffing, whatever, because I've just stuffed them with polyfill. It's easy, it's easily accessible. That's what I use. I'd like to try some of the other stuff, but it sounds like it's a bigger mess, and frankly, I've got enough messes in my life I don't need any more. Um, and this is, I think it's called My Heart is True. It's from Gail Busey. I can't remember the exact name of the pattern, but again, I just had to stuff it and sew up the little hole in it. And this is the selfie sampler from Lucy Kate. Same thing. I just had to stuff it and sew up the hole. So I finished the, the smalls that were kind of half-ass finished. Um, I went ahead and completely FFO'd them. And, well, not all of them. All of the ones that looked like they would kind of go in a Valentine slash springy display. So I finished those. And then I'm going to show you a couple of previous finishes. I'll be darned if I remember the name of this. Be My Valentine, Be Mine. It's a, um, I believe it's a Country Cottage Needleworks pattern. And I did this two or three years ago. And it's just finished into a little flat and it'll hang. I don't have it hanging right now. It's just sitting up on my hall tree with all my little valentine things around it. And then I finished this last year also. No, this was probably a 2018 finish. Um, Love You More, which was a freebie from um, Hands On Design, I believe. If you look at her blog, you can. she does one every year, and you can go back and see those from previous years. And I just finished it into a little pillow, put some of the fabric on the end. And then this is Silk Sari Ribbon, which is torn from used saris and sold. Um, it's very cheap. If you search on Etsy, you can find it easily. And it comes in a variety of really pretty rainbow colors. And I thought that looked good on there. I do, I may, once Valentine's is over and I can take those um, out of my little display up there, um, I may go back and, and put some trim around the edge of some of those pillows. But um, I do not like that kind of hand sewing. And so I tend not to do that kind of hand sewing, which is why they've been finished for six months and not completely finished. But anyway, and then the last thing I'll show you is, I'm, this has been on my hall tree forever because it's just where it lives all the time. I did not stitch this. This is Petty Point Needlepoint with a lot of cat fur on it. A friend of mine that I used to show cats with, Carol Hale from Houston, um, Carol is in her 80s now, and I don't know if she still stitches or not, but she did beautiful, beautiful work and finished this needlepoint, petty point cat for me. And then because my cattery name is Bumblebee, she added this Bumblebee to it. So, and she finished it. She did a beautiful job of finishing it with a cording and everything. So, thank you again, Carol. Love ya. And that lives up there with all my other sp Actually, it lives there year-round on the hall tree. Right now, it's a pretty part of the Valentine display. But anyway, those are my previous finishes, and I finally got them done. And I stacked them on top of what I needed to show you, so. Un momento, por favor. And I hope y'all cannot see my floor in the background. It is, I poured another two inches of rain out of the rain gauge this morning when I went out to get the mail and it has been just rainy and nasty here for weeks and weeks and weeks. And my dogs have 
there can't possibly be any mud left in my backyard because my dogs have all trapped it into my house. So, if you can see the floor, don't look, don't look. Because it's a mud mess. And then, the reason I know that I ran out of pins was because I ran out of pins while pinning this. And it's not sealed in the back because this is a thrifted frame. Well, let me start at the top here. This is Oh Beautiful from Shepherd's Bush. This was my New Year's start 2019. No. 2018. And I finished it the first week of 2019. It is a beautiful band sampler. Lots and lots of specialty stitches. And this is a frame that I thrifted from a place in Fort Smith called Wasted. Um, is the, it's a duplicate frame to the one I framed another Shepherd's Bush pattern in, or piece in last year. And I didn't have any trouble taking that one apart, but when I went to take this one apart, I tore the mat. Want to cut, yeah, this bottom, this bottom corner over here. I don't know if you can see it, but I tore the mat when I was taking it apart because it was stuck hard to whatever was in there before. So, I'm going to have to have another mat cut. So, that's why it's not sealed up. But, even if I have to buy another mat, it will still be much cheaper than anything I would have paid to have somebody else frame. So, um, I'm just going to take the mat out of there and take it with me to Hobby Lobby and have another mat cut. Darn it. I was mad at myself for doing that. And Sky is here bumping everything. So if you see things jiggling, I'm sorry. Leave those alone, please. And she wants to play with all the little pillows. This is why I don't have a Sky. Leave them alone. Uh -uh. No, go on. This is why I don't have a dough bowl sitting on my dining room table full of little smalls because if they're where the cats can get to them, for some reason, they think they make great kitty toys. So they're up on the top shelf of my hall tree where the cats don't get. They actually don't get up there. They're not supposed to get on the bar. They're not supposed to get on the hutch. They do get on both of those sometimes, but for whatever reason, knock on wood, they're pretty good about staying away from the hutch. Okay, anyway, that was all my Finishes, FFOs, previous finishes, I think. It all runs together. I will put names of stuff down in the show notes when I get back to this to do the show notes. So, um, y'all bear with me if that takes a little bit of time. Oh, I lied. I do have one more finish. This is Harvest Time from Chessie and Me. Very pretty little pattern. And I actually finished this last night, so it's not ironed. Sorry about that, but at midnight last night, I didn't care. and I really didn't care much this morning either, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I typically put stuff in my little project roll and leave it there, and then I iron it when I'm getting ready to do anything with it. But this is Harvest Time from Chessie and Me, and you will notice that I did not do the Harvest Time, the wording over here. And there are also, also some other little... I don't know if they're supposed to be snowflakes or falling leaves or whatever, but I just wasn't in love with them. I didn't do those, and I think it looks fine without that stuff. There are some specialty stitches in here. There's one over one in the bird and the cat, and then the acorns, um, this pumpkin and this pumpkin, and the two pumpkins at the bottom are all satin stitched, and then... I think both of, I think all of the rest of the pup, pumpkins are Smyrna crosses. And there's some other Smyrna crosses in here somewhere too, if I can remember. The star on the, the barn, and then the roof of the barn is also satin stitched. And this was a great um, combination. It was, it was, there were enough specialty stitches in it to be interesting, um, but there weren't so many that I felt like I don't want to do this. I just want to cross stitch. So, um, and I, this is, I think, the first Chessie and Me that I have done, at least that I can, that may not be right. I may have done another small. But anyway, it was a great combination of cross and specialty stitches. It didn't take long to do. It's relatively small. I don't know how small. 75 by 79. Um, 
I would recommend, this is on, I actually think this is 40 count. 40 count something or other that I don't remember. If you need to know desperately, let me know and I can go back on my notes and figure it out. Um, but this is a 40 count and the Smyrna crosses on the 40 count just really are so crowded that you really can't tell that they're Smyrna crosses. So if I do another Chessie and Me piece, I will probably do it on either 32 or 36 instead of the 40. I don't tend to stitch on a whole lot of 40 anyway because it's harder to, to do the sewing method. But I'm very pleased with how that came out. And hopefully, before it actually gets to be harvest time, I will finish this one up. It's going to be finished into a little pen pillow. And this is also going to be part of today's giveaway. So y'all hang tight for that. And these were none of the recommended flosses. I, I just pulled from my stash whatever I had. Okay, something else to add to my stack of crap here. Okay, and then when I did, I told you I was shamed into doing some finishing because of everything I showed in that finish parade. When I did my whip parade, I was kind of also shamed into making an effort on some stuff, which is how I finished the harvest time thing and then this past Tuesday, when we sat for four hours in the waiting room at Mercy to get Steve's um, contrast enhanced CT done, because you know he had to get there and drink the contrast and then have the first part of the CT and then get IV contrast and have the second part. Um, anyway, I had said I wasn't feeling this anymore, but I was in a hurry to get out the door so we could get there on time. And I just basically grabbed the top bag on my stack of crap. and. I'm very happy that I did because I have fallen back in love with this. And y'all, sorry, I've got a needle stuck in here. Because when I finished in the waiting room, that was where I finished and just left it there. <laughs> but this is, what is it? Sing a Song of Seasons from Blackbird Designs. It is Loose Feathers Series for the Birds number five. And I had, I probably got twice as much on this as I had when I showed it in my whip parade. Um, all of the light green is new. The vast majority of which I did in that waiting room, waiting on him. So that's got quite a bit of progress on it. I'm happy with it. I am going to try to finish this. I have, um, I like it again, and I am going to continue to stitch on it. So thanks for everybody who encouraged me with that. Okay, what else I got? I gotta look at my list because I don't have a brain. Um, I have been kind of in need of some distraction this week, so I do have a couple of new starts, and I imagine that I will have some more new starts. And the first thing I started, this is a punch needle, and this is my first go at a punch needle. This is Housewarming from Threads That Bind, Sean Arnett. And Anne at the Shepherd's Needle has been really encouraging me to do punch needle. And I think it's beautiful. Every time I look at the shop, I just see so many things that I like. But I've just been reluctant to start because, you know, it's new. It's different. Can I do that? Well, I can do it. Sort of. Um, it, I have a fairly amateurish attempt. This is my start on housewarming. And this is the backside side. The front side does look a little better. Although, you know, I still got a ways to go, y'all. But that's where I am on my first punch needle. And I am enjoying it. I like doing it. I can only do it for about an hour at a time because holding the punch gives me a cramp in my hand for some reason. But this was, I probably spent two hours, two, maybe two and a half hours on it the first day. Um, when I was, which involves some doing it and pulling it out and doing it again. And then the last couple of evenings, um, I've spent about an hour on it. And I am enjoying it. I will be doing more punch needle. So, anyway. And then yesterday, 
I had another new start. This is an Humble Heart from, that's hard to say by the way, an Humble Heart. You want to either leave off the H on everything or you want to include it on everything. Anyway, an Humble Heart, see, I did it there. An Humble Heart from Shepherd's Bush. Just a little kit. And I think I got this from somebody. This may be the one I won from Priscilla and Chelsea. I don't, because I'm a doofus, don't write down things like that. And I don't know where I got it. But I did pull it out last night, or yesterday during the day, and I got a pretty decent start on it. And that kind of checkered border there, I don't particularly enjoy that. So what I've been doing is like one length of thread, stitch some other stuff. One length of thread, stitch some other stuff. Going back and forth. But I'm happy with, that's one day's progress and I'm pretty happy with that. This is on 32 count. It's a 32 count linen. I don't remember the name of it. It's called Melt Away Gray, but they don't say who the linen is from. I don't think. So I don't know who the maker of the linen is. It is a lavender gray color. Depending on the light that you see it in, it looks more lavender or it looks more gray. Happy with my progress for one day on that. And I haven't stitched on anything but 36 and 40 count for a while, so pull out this 32 is really easy. So I think this may become my next, um, you know, take it with me project because it's easy to see. Um, and like I said, I anticipate I'll be sitting for four to six hours on Tuesday waiting on Steve because that CT needle guided biopsy is likely to take a while. So anyway, those were my two new starts. Um, I have a little bit of haul. Sorry, I've got a big mess is what I've got. I'm trying to keep stuff from falling on the floor. The first thing I got was I've been having trouble with the rings that my flosses are stored on um, popping open and like snagging the floss on where that the jaw is. And I was gonna open this and show it to you. Diana, it is Kismet Stitches and somebody else have, several other people have shown these. So I thought, well, I'm gonna give these a try. If I ever get the package open. And they are a little ring that just closes. It, it screws together, bottom line. To make them bigger, you can screw several together. And there are longer ones and shorter ones in this package. This was a package of 20 miscellaneous ones from Amazon for, I believe, $9. But if you want... Supposedly, you're supposed to be able to screw them together to get more of them, to um, make bigger loops. I haven't tested this theory. Can you tell? Yeah, there we go. So, if you want a bigger loop, like I would store most of my flosses, my Color and Cotton and Victorian Motto and so forth on, you can screw a couple of them together to make a bigger loop. And I don't think my floss will be as likely to snag on this as they are on those other things. I put a snag in a really pretty skein of silk the other day and I was not happy about it. But anyway, that was my first little bit of haul. And like I said, there's a, just search them uh, like, I think I, I searched coated wire key ring or something like that on Amazon and they'll come up and they were not expensive.
So now I just need to get my floss transfer over onto those. And then because I'm an idget, idget, I-D-J-I-T, that is South Texas slang. It may apply other places as well, but I am one. This is Harriet Elizabeth Coe from Brenda Gervais. It's a very, very pretty sampler. I got this from the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock. There's a sow starting on this. Here's where the idget part comes in. I don't remember who's hosting the sow. I don't remember when it starts. Sometime in February, I think. If you know the answer to that and you're planning on joining that sow, somebody let me know because clueless idget. So anyway, that's Harriet Elizabeth Coe from Brenda Gervais. Y'all know I am not super big on kind of the quieter colors. I will likely change some colors in this to suit me a little bit more. Make them a little bit brighter and springier because that's just me. Right, let me put stuff back in my bag because lots of crap. Um, this sal for Cinnamon Stars. This came out several, a couple years ago, I think, from Plum Street, and it's really cute. And I had resisted the urge until I saw this sal, and I went, well, I'm going to stitch along with that. And this was Kippy, the academic stitcher. If y'all aren't watching her, she's a lot of fun. Y'all go watch her. I like to watch her because she sounds like Texas. It sounds like home to me. Um, anyway, Cinnamon Stars, I haven't started it yet. I will at some point. Probably this week depending on what else is going on. And then the last thing I got from um, Anne at the Shepherd's Needle is Autumn Salt Boxes from Plum Street Samplers. And the reason I'm doing this is I love, I like stitching houses and I like those little houses. And I have got a really long, narrow frame that I found when I was digging around looking for frames to do this finishing. And I thought, what if I stitched a little village of them? Which may require some, hmm, some work to adjust it. I haven't looked, I have a couple of the other patterns. This was the only one of the salt boxes I didn't have. So I got this one and I'm thinking about doing them all in a long string. Cause you know, I like putting those things together and making what should be a little small into a big mess. But anyway. I added that to my collection. God knows when I'll start it. And then the last thing I purchased was this um, popped up from McKenna at 1884 Stitchery. Stitching in sequins, if you wanna see your own floss tube. This is Loose Feathers pattern number 31, Blessings and Kind Wishes from Blackbird Designs. And again, I like houses. I like Blackbird Designs. I like those cranes or whatever they are, those long-legged birds. Um, and the cinnamon is very pretty. It says, when this you see, remember me, though many miles apart we be. And I just thought that was really pretty. So I had to add that to my collection. And then the last thing I got was I was watching Brenda and the Cereal Starter. And they talked about um, Hewitt Hill samplers. And this is a free download. I think if you subscribe to her um, newsletter, you can download this for free. This is Betty Glover 1837. It's just a PDF that you print off, which you can see that I've done. And it's also really pretty. I love that crazy hat. So that's really pretty. So that was my freebie that I downloaded. And I need to go back. I, I was looking at her site because I thought, oh, I'm just gonna order something else too. And then something happened and I got distracted and I haven't gone back to the computer and looked at it. But that was my haul. Okay. We're almost done, y'all. Thank God. 35 minutes. Um, I'm going to talk real quickly about Facebook and then we'll get to the giveaways. The ones that I have winners to announce and the ones for this week, which will be Fractor Flowers and harvest time, wherever I've now put that pattern, God knows. Find it in a minute. Um, anyway, about Facebook. 
I'm not on Facebook as much as I used to be, um, but I have recently, over the last six months, just had a plethora of friend requests. And, <laughs> my dog is snoring. Um, I have decided um, that I'm going to cut back on that. So, if I don't know you personally, if we don't have a connection, if I haven't met you somewhere, know you specifically through something, I'm probably not going to accept friend requests from people just out of the blue. That If I can look at your profile when you send your friend request through and it shows that you're a member of a bunch of stitching groups that I'm a member of, yeah, I, I might click yes on that one. But I've gotten so many from people that I just have no clue. And it's not that I don't want to connect with folks, but I just think that maybe I need to be more cautious um, because some of these folks, after I have clicked yes to confirm the friend request, I, I have, oh boy. <laughs> hmm, some of those messages, mm -mm, nope, nope. So anyway, I don't mean to offend anybody. It's not that I don't, I'm not interested in you per se. If you will message me and tell me how we have a connection, then I'm happy to um, add you to my Facebook friends list, but I'm no longer just randomly accepting people that I don't have a clue about. I do have an Instagram. It's Fat Cat Flossing, P-H-A-T-C-A-T-P-H-L-O-S-S-I-N-G. I'll put that down in the show notes. Um, and please feel free to follow me on Instagram. But again, I've just decided I need to be a little more cautious with the Facebook thing because it amazes me the things that people write. Just amazes me. Anyway, um, okay, two more things and we're done. Last is I meant to look up the code and I forgot to do it. And at the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, my LNS is having a Super Bowl sale. It starts tomorrow. At, well, it starts tonight at midnight online and runs through 11.59 p.m. Tuesday the 4th. Um, I believe the codes are Chiefs or 49ers, but I could not swear to that. I will look those up and put them in the show notes when I do the show notes. Um, and it's www.shepherdsneedle.com. Or if you go into the store there in Little Rock, they're open today, Saturday the 1st. They're closed on Sunday and Monday, and then they'll be open again on Tuesday the 4th. So if you go into the, the shop and mention those codes, they will honor the, the sale in-house also. But everything on their site, with the exception of it can't apply like to pre-orders or... Um, there's a couple of other things that are excluded that I don't remember. So check out their website to be sure about that. I will put the discount codes in the show notes when I do them. Okay, and then last thing is giveaways. Excuse me while I get a drink. And while I find the other giveaway. Who knows? Maybe on the floor by now. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What did I do with it? There it is, I bet. I really don't want to knock that. Well, no, nope, not in here either. Okay, well, we'll find it. There it is. Sorry, I'm not organized today. My, my brain has been kind of um, fried this week, the last couple of weeks. Okay, um, the existing giveaways from the last few times, there are several of them. Um, the first one was for this pattern from Mosey and Me. This is Rufus. And it is a Mosey and Me pattern from 1997. Really cute little spring rabbit. I think he's so cute. Hello, pumpkin. And the winner for Rufus is Gibbs Girl underscore Stitches. I will go when I get to the computer and comment on your comment. And my email will be in the show notes. If you will just email me your mailing address, I will get this sent off to you. I also had two pieces of linen that I called out of my, um, I'm giving up on this stack. Um, 
that I said people could mention that they were interested in those. One of them for, was for a peak of, piece of cork, I think it was 18 count cork linen. And the winner for that is Jerry Ann Holdaway. Again, Jerry Ann, I'll comment on your comment. Pumpkin, leave that alone, please. I'll comment on your comment, email me, and I'll get it sent to you. Um, there was also a piece of Weeks Dye Works linen, which I couldn't decide if it was 28 or 30 or 32 or whatever, but the winner for that um, was Yankee Creek Stitcher. Jerry, if you will email me again, I will get that sent to you. And then the big giveaway was my 3,000 subscriber giveaway. And y'all, y'all missed out. I had told folks that if they commented on any one of the last, how, I think it was four videos. Pumpkin, leave it alone. Sorry. Um, if you commented on any one of those videos that I had mentioned that 3,000 subscriber giveaway in, you had to be 18 or older, be a subscriber, like the video, and comment. The comment didn't have to say anything in particular. There just had to be a comment. And what I did was I took all of those comments, What I, I went to each video, sorted the comments for who was a subscriber and who was not. Um, and then, pumpkin, leave it. My eyes gonna start to twitch. Um, anyway, I sorted them for who was a subscriber and who wasn't. And then those people who commented on those videos that were subscribers, I added you to a spreadsheet. And if you commented on multiple videos, you got multiple lines on the spreadsheet. And what I mean by y'all missed out was there were a total of 839 comments from folks saying, you know, I'd like the, the prize. Um, but of those, only 254 of the 839 comments were from people who were subscribed. So I'm sorry if you commented. I'm having to take all, remember when I said cats want to take things and play with them? She's determined. Um, Anyway, if you didn't get entered, it's because you weren't a subscriber. So please subscribe so I can include you in the next giveaway because it'll have the same rules. But the 3,000 subscriber giveaway was for three patterns. A Prairie Schooler Fairy. A Waxing Moon Designs Spring Pattern. And then a Plum Street that I like so much I bought it twice. Also included was some Thread Heaven and a little goodie bag, whatever you want to call it, a needle sorter, a fat quarter of Picture This Plus Heroic Linen, some thread cards, and then I said you could choose, I will make you a project bag, and you could choose from either the envelope style Vana bag or from the zipper bag. I use Vana's tutorial for making these. I Pumpkin, leave it the hell alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there goes a twitch. Um, I use Suzette Peters, the um, primitive stitcher, her tutorial for making the ones with the zipper. You could choose either style. And I will make you a bag of, you know, whatever suits your fancy. Whether it's floral or Christmas or spring or animals or whatever, um, or you have a particular color, whatever. Here's my scheduled hot flash. Okay, moving right along. And the winner for that was, for all the goodies, the bag and all of this stuff, the winner for that is Ashley Bolin. So Ashley, I will comment on your comment when I go into the computer once this, this is uploaded. I will comment on your comment, put my email in the drop down. just email me and let me, um, you know, don't put your address on YouTube. Email me with your address, and I will get this bag made over the next few weeks with everything going on with Steve. I don't know that it's going to be this week, um, but I will get it made and get it sent out to you as soon as possible. So congratulations to Ashley. you done good. You subscribed and got entered. In fact, I think you were one of the people that might have been on there like three times. So it pays to comment. Okay. So we'll have two giveaways for this time. These are the two of the patterns that I just finished. Fractor Flowers from Lottie Da and Harvest Time from Chessie and Me. Um, and again, just comment, you know, be 18 or older, be a subscriber, I will check. Like the video, 
and comment below. If you don't mention contest or giveaway, and don't be ugly, or I will delete your comment. Because when I was, I was a nursing house supervisor for um, three and a half, four years, and I worked the night shift and in a 300 plus bed acute care hospital with a large ER and a psych ward and a lot of you know other specialty kind of things. And I, it was a busy job. And what I would tell people, because the nursing supervisor gets called for everything. Everything from you know the really bad stuff, code gray, code blue, whatever it is in your hospital, you know, which is somebody died, you're gonna resuscitate them. Um, to, you know, I need somebody, I can't get the IV started, can you come start the IV? To, um, the psych floor's on fire. Yes, it happened. Um, a patient peed in the refrigerator. Yes, it happened. Um, we really don't know how to handle this person down in the ER. Anyway, a plethora of things. And what I would tell people, because I'm not real patient, but if you don't exceed my stupidity tolerance, you will not activate my bitch factor. So, don't be ugly or you'll activate my bitch factor. <laughs> anyway, and I'll delete you. But to be entered, 18 or over, like, subscribe, comment. I will choose two winners, one for each one. Um, if you only want fractal flowers or you only want harvest time, put in your comment which one you'd prefer. Um, in fact, in your comment, say either fractor, F-R-A-K-T-U-R. Make sure you spell it like Let's not do that. Let's say flowers. <laughs> flowers is harder to screw up. F-L-O-W-E-R-S. Flowers are harvest. If you want to spell out the whole thing, fine. Um, but I will search flowers and harvest. Um, and if you want to be entered for both, put both. Anyway, I'm at 47 minutes, which means it will take hours for this to upload. So I'm going to say, call it quits here. I've been very disorganized and blithering along today. Thank y'all for spending time with me and listening to me. I appreciate it. Y'all are um, my hookup to the wider world of cross stitch. And I really enjoy all your comments and interacting back and forth with you. I hope I see you on Instagram. Um, I may see you on Facebook, especially if you're in one of the cross stitch groups. Um, if you have a question or anything in particular, feel free to email me. And I hope to visit with y'all again soon. Frankly, it will all depend on what's going on with Steve. Um, so y'all say some prayers. I will talk to y'all again soon. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.